welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are a new viewer here, you are very, very welcome. And if you're a regular, welcome back to what is week eight of our Christmas planning series. Week eight, can you believe it? We're here already, just about to move into December. And I think that somehow brings a bit of a, a shift. We suddenly feel like we have to step up a gear and you know with it can come a bit of overwhelm a bit of panic that you're not where you should be in in all of your planning so instead of just launching straight into the to-do list this week i just wanted to kind of spend a couple of minutes looking at maybe a few strategies to just help us cope with that shift into december and hopefully just try and not you know have those feelings of overwhelm and panic i mean at the end of the day that's why we started doing this planning so early to try and avoid this um, and that's ultimately what i wanted you know to to achieve in helping people you know to to get to with this series um you know to avoid the overwhelm avoid the stress but sometimes just with the best will in the world it just comes when the calendar ticks around and you think oh my goodness i'm not where i thought i should be you know where i thought i would be i've not got this done i've not got that done and uh, yeah i'm kind of in that boat too you know there's definitely things on this list that i haven't done yet um and it's kind of why i started the series as well to uh, keep me on track and we, we're in this together you know we're going through this together so yeah i just wanted to spend a couple of minutes um thinking about a couple of strategies to get us through the next couple of weeks and the first thing really is don't aim for perfection aim for creating joyful moments now perfectionism is a big thing at this time of year when you're planning for christmas i know i am a self-confessed perfectionist and it's not a good thing because i can sometimes get it into my head that i want things to look a certain way you know you think i want this particular color for this decor scheme or whatever and you just get completely focused and bogged down on that and it is very true you know the saying perfectionism is the enemy of progress because you just get so fixated on something and trying to create this perfect look or find the perfect gift or make the perfect recipe or whatever it might be and it just causes you stress and you don't make any progress so forget perfectionism one tip that i usually try to kind of adopt when i recognize that i'm going down that road with myself is that i think if you don't achieve this or if you don't get the look you're going for or if you don't find the color or the recipe or the whatever what is the impact will your guests know that you wanted to make this specific recipe but you couldn't find it or will your guests know when they're sitting around your christmas table that what you were really going for was this look that you saw on pinterest no they won't they won't have any clue what was in your head um or you know your gift recipient you're trying to find the perfect gift for them when they open that parcel or if you default to a gift card they're just going to be delighted to be spending christmas with you and getting a, a token you know from you so let go of the perfectionism and focus on creating those joyful moments and that could be as simple as you know if you find yourself in a moment where you're you know running around stressing trying to make things perfect when what you had if we think back to when we created our kind of wish list for what we wanted Christmas to be maybe one of the things that you had on there was you love to spend some time sitting down you know with a mug of hot chocolate and enjoying a Christmas movie that's the joyful moment for you so just ditch the perfectionist thoughts take some time out put the kettle on make yourself a cozy drink sit down and watch half an hour of a of a Christmas movie those are joyful moments that you want to create for yourself forget the perfectionism things will always go wrong at this time of year whether it's in the run-up you know in the planning or in the day itself yeah I think if you can embrace those imperfections those are actually the things that create the memories so in every family there will be the oh remember the Christmas when the cat pulled the tree down or remember the Christmas when the oven broke down and we had to cook our turkey 
we have to borrow the oven from next door or whatever. Those are the things that will stay in the memory. And that's saying you will laugh about this one day. You will. You absolutely will. So I think we just have to learn to embrace all of those things. And uh, just, yeah, especially as we move into this kind of final stage, you know, the final stages of, of prep as we go into December, just ditch the perfection. The other thing that I would suggest that you do at this stage in your planning is to examine all those traditions that you have and just decide which ones you really need to keep, which ones are important to you and which ones that you can ditch. You know, despite trying to get ahead of the game and doing all this kind of planning and prep, if you are feeling overwhelmed is, yeah, just have a look at them and decide what needs to stay what you can ditch. And you might find that you've been doing something for years and years just because it's something that that you do or because your family does. And you actually find that nobody's really that bothered about it. And so it can just be, it can just be ditched. Um, So that's kind of another thing to, to think about as we move into December. And then there's the whole dealing with a curveball. There will always be curveballs. So for me, this past week um you know we did decide as i'd said in a previous video is have a think about when you want to decorate put the dates in your diary make sure you've got everybody on board that needs to be around to help so that was one of the things that i did go ahead and do i had planned for the first week in december to be our kind of decorating weekend and then it turns out that my husband has to go away for the weekend he's been pulled away um he's actually away most of this week then he's back for a little while then he has to go away again and where our decorations are all stored it's definitely preferable to have an extra pair of hands or an extra couple of pair of hands to get them all down similarly with putting all the outside lights up so we had to kind of you know change tack i had to we've got the christmas lights up we put them up um last weekend they're not switched on yet but we engaged one of our sons to come and help and put them all up so they're all done i got them to help bring all the decorations down out of the attic the upstairs of my house looks like a bomb site because all the boxes are all there but it was the only way that i could do it and still be able to decorate i couldn't delay the decorating because we have things on kind of following weekends um so yeah i had to just sort of kind of change all my plans and work around it but these are all the things that will happen you will get a curveball you will end up sick for a couple of days or you will have unexpected visitors on the day that you'd planned you know to do something being open to changing your plans is a is a big one and just being able to deal with the curveballs that life throws at you as i say i created this series i wanted to create this series to keep me on track as much as anything else and um It's certainly not perfect in this house, trying to get everything ready. But uh, yeah, so as I say, I've got all the boxes there ready to do the decorating. And it looks like I'll be decorating the house myself this weekend. So on to our kind of tasks for this week and the big one, the gift category. Where are you with your gift buying? I would suggest that by now, really, you should be aiming to be about 80% through your gift buying. And the real reason for that is that as we move into December, other things ramp up. You may well be attending um, Christmas outings. Maybe you've got some theatre trips booked. You might have some dinners out with friends. You might be hosting. You might have uh, parties to go to. You might have school events to go to. And all of these things will be grabbing your time away from what's left of it to to buy gifts. So I would say by the time you move into December, you want to be about 80% through your gift buying. And hopefully that will have been driven by lots of uh, sales shopping over the, the last week. I know that I, over the weekend, put in some big online orders. I'm waiting for the deliveries of those this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of pretty well on track there. Again, a few curveballs. One of the big things that somebody had on their list, it turns out that they've suspended 
shipping to Europe. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that one yet. But um, yeah, a plan, my plan B, I'll have to go to my plan B for that person. Aim to be about 80% through. So if you're not, given what we've just said about the whole kind of perfectionism and, and you know not stressing about it, give it some real focus over the next couple of days. Make the gift shopping your main focus this week to get to that 80% and you know there will always be things that you're going to buy um after that you know some you might be gifting somebody some food items that have a, a limited shelf life that you can't really order until a couple of weeks before Christmas so you know you can't be a hundred percent through but give the rest of your gift shopping some real focus and let's get that you know to almost over the finishing line in this next week and one thing that I would add in here, a tip that probably should have been added to the planner. It was something that I overlooked and um, I would certainly add it into your planner if you haven't already done it. It may be too late for this year, but if you're going to reuse you know, the format of your planner for next year, then you definitely want to add it in there. And that is a bit of an online order tracker. So I've just added a page in with um, the date that the order was placed, who it was placed with. You could certainly, you know, add in a column if it's a spreadsheet for the order reference, but I tend to keep a folder in my sort of email folders for my online shopping and I just put the confirmations in there. But yeah, just, you know, the date that it was ordered, um, who it was ordered with, the, the, the sort of estimated delivery date, what was in the order, and then you can just review that and, um, you know, mark it as, as kind of received. Um, but yeah, when you're doing a lot of online ordering, it can be really easy to overlook one that maybe for whatever reason doesn't come. And then you, you suddenly get to the point where you're wrapping gifts or a week before Christmas and you're like, oh, I, that's right. I did order from them and it hasn't come. So add that into your planner. Um, as I say, might not be much good for this year. Maybe you've already done your ordering, but uh, definitely one to add in for next year. And another tip that I've got for you this week, something that I realised that I am doing and I thought it might be useful for some of you. In the beginning, when we were starting our planning, I said have a spot where you drop, you know, all of your gifts to sort of or all of your Christmas shopping, whether it's table decor, or decorations, whatever, just so that you've got it all together and you know where it is. As those parcels accumulate, what I've realised that I've kind of started doing is it's kind of in two parts so I've got an area where I'm storing all of the the purchases but I've actually got a bit of a drop zone where I put them when I initially bring them in and I kind of it's kind of like a, a goods in holding it's simply a chair in the corner of my office but what I do is I bring the bags in, I drop them on that chair until I get a chance to go through them. So I'll go through the bag and go, well, that's the gift for so-and-so. And then I'll write that in my planner under like their gifts or, you know, the table place cards are in there. So I'll record in my planner that I've bought those. Or maybe you've bought like a couple of stocking fillers and, you know, so you going to write that down under that person that that's you know the the stocking filler and really the reason for this is it's so easy to forget what what you've bought the, the further through the buying process you get you suddenly think oh you forget that you've bought something so you open a bag and you're like, oh I forgot I bought that for them and then you've maybe gone and bought something else so yeah just having that little drop zone where you are recording everything that you are buying into your planner it certainly has really helped me so it's kind of a, a goods in recorded before they then move I guess to the either the wrapping stage um, or especially with stocking gifts that maybe you're not actually going to wrap and um, you're just kind of holding those until you're doing the stockings sort of later on um, Christmas Eve or whatever but yeah have a have a bit of a a goods in area that are waiting to be recorded in your planner that's what i'm doing maybe it'll help you too just jumping in the middle here with a little plea from me if you're enjoying this video or this series of videos please do consider subscribing to the channel it does help no end to grow the channel and then that allows me to just continue creating more of this type of content so give the video a little thumbs up like and please do consider subscribing and 
leave a comment too. Let me know what you think. I am absolutely listening to you and your feedback and reading all of the comments. I love getting them um, just to see, you know, what all your thoughts are. It's great a great place to share ideas, how you're getting organised for Christmas. You'll notice as well that this video has no music in the background and that's because a couple of people commented and said they found the music a little bit distracting and that it was drowning out my voice a little bit and so I've absolutely listened. There's no music in this one but let me know what you think. Does it seem better without the music? Would you want to have the music back? Do you prefer it with or without the music? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to your feedback and trying to improve the, the whole experience experience but uh, it's lovely to have you all um, joining joining me in this series of videos and yeah please do think about subscribing if you can. Next on the list this week is in the hosting category. If you're hosting Christmas Day dinner or another big meal over the holidays you're going to want to think about um, whether you're going to have um, Christmas crackers on the table, whether you're going to have a little gift on the table. You need to decide that this week so that you can make sure to add those to your master shopping list. Now, personally, I don't like Christmas crackers. My family know this. The whole sort of British tradition of having Christmas crackers on the table, I don't know what it is. I think it's, it's kind of wasteful in a way. Maybe that's what bothers me. For most of them, it's just paper that you pull the cracker and you, you waste the paper. I'm not big on paper hats, wearing paper hats around the table. I don't like forcing my guests or making them feel like they need to wear one. And usually the gifts that you get in them are so silly. I'm not big on the silly jokes. <laughs> I just don't like Christmas crackers. So what I will quite often do, things I've done in the past, I've done little gifts on the table. So again, that's quite a big thing. I think certainly in the UK and elsewhere perhaps is like a, a little table gift. Um, I have got little cute little bags. I think you can get them in Home Goods. Um, TK Maxx quite often have them here. Packs of little gifts, and I've put one at each uh, place set setting, and maybe put some little sweeties or a little kind of gift in there for the person. I've done drinks miniatures around the table. You know, maybe gin for the ladies. A little soft. We don't have you know a lot of children now in the family so um it's kind of one under 18 but uh, yeah like a gin miniature or a whiskey miniature I've done that I've done little chocolates around the table but there's quite a few cute ideas out there if you just want to do something um another idea might be to do a personalized Christmas decoration a tree decoration for your guests so that they've got something that they can take away as a kind of memory souvenir of the day and hang on their tree when they get home. I know that Hotel Chocolat are doing nice little mini crackers with uh, chocolates, sort of gourmet chocolates in them. You could uh, do something like that. So decide this week what it is that you are going to do, if indeed anything. So going back to the whole perfectionism thing, you don't need to do anything. Your guests will never know that you had it in your head and you just didn't get round to it. If it is something that is important to you and will create a joyful moment for you when you know you see your guests sit down and they've got a little something at their table, then you need to decide this week what that is and get it on your master list. Next on the list this week is in the food and drink category. And what you're going to do this week is to make a list of all those staples that you buy uh, routinely over the Christmas season, whether it's in connection with hosting or whether it's just things that you treat yourself to for your own family, food and drink wise, you know, to have over the, the holiday season. And then just divide it into categories and then you're going to drip it into your weekly groceries throughout December or any time that you pop into the grocery store, you could just get something else on that list. So your categories might look something like wine and beer, uh, soft drinks, extra chocolates maybe, your condiments, your your kind of pickles, your cranberry sauces, that type of thing. Um, maybe crackers for cheese, you know, cheese and biscuits. Anything like that, that you can just that have got long life that you can just pick off the shelf just now and tuck away and just each time as I say you go into the grocery store whether you do your grocery shopping weekly or whether you go kind of every few days but just 
grab something else from that list, you'll be so glad that you did because when the grocery stores get absolutely manic in that week leading up to Christmas, you'll only need to be there to get your fresh veg and you know the things that have got a short shelf life. Um, so it'll just be so much easier. You can get all of the long life stuff now over the next couple of weeks and just tuck it away. Next on the list is really in the Christmas card and charitable giving categories. Where are you with your Christmas cards? In previous weeks we talked about setting out when you were going to do kind of each batch of cards so hopefully you're kind of on top of that. If you don't send Christmas cards and a lot of people don't now but maybe what they do instead is give a donation to charity instead. We see that certainly in the UK quite a lot now. I would suggest that this week is the week that you put your message out on social media to your kind of friends, family friends, saying, you know, we see it quite a lot, saying, you know, we're not giving, uh, we're not sending out Christmas cards this year, but instead we're going to give to charity. And you just do a little post on social media, letting people know who you're donating to, wishing all your family and friends a Merry Christmas. And uh, yeah, just get that done this week and get your donation in. And then that's that one done. And so that's it for week eight of our planning series. Please do check out some of the other videos that I'm posting. I've already um, posted the one about Harrods on my recent London trip. I'm pulling together some videos uh, to let you see kind of Christmas in London, different aspects of that. So I've got a few others that I'm pulling together at the moment. And yeah, just I would say for this week, the big message that I want to convey going into December is, and it was the whole point of doing this series, is don't let it overwhelm you. You will not have a joyful Christmas and neither will your family if come December 24th into 25th you're just a frazzled mess. So just try to recognise in yourself these moments when you think I'm getting overwhelmed here, I'm starting to panic and just take some time out. If you can, stop put the kettle on, give yourself a 10 minute break, just try to break the cycle and ensure that you do go into December looking for and creating those joyful moments. And yeah, just trying to remember that, um, you know, ask yourself the question, will anybody really care if this bit doesn't get done? Or will it really matter in the big picture if this doesn't turn out exactly the way I want to because it really is about you know creating the, the the joy and ditching all the kind of perfectionist ideas and that's why we've been planning so early to, to sort of try and, and make that happen so let's go through into December all together with that thought and I will see you in the next one